Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTheTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Hope everybody had a, a good weekend. Uh, crazy storm day uh, in the Northeast. I'm in New Jersey, uh, just snowing and sleeting and snowing nonstop. Uh, it's probably going to snow for another 12 or 15 hours, so God knows what the hell is going on out there. So today was today did not play out uh, in any in any way shape or fashion that I thought it was going to play out. Um, you, you could tell by number one, uh, last yesterday's video, the weekend video, market looked very, very good. And I kept on saying over and over again for like weeks, 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 the market's good, so it's not. And again, it's, it's a, such a, it's such a simple thing to say. And, and somebody could turn around and say, well, well, duh, obviously if the market is good and then the market goes bad, well, that's bad. Yeah. The problem is when you have a linear market, again, like we always say, the market's just not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, by the way, we're going to, you know, we're going to tap you out right now. And if you look at the way the market structure was playing out this morning, everything was fine, right? We gapped up a little bit. Uh, then they came out with some manufacture numbers. And OK, not a big deal. We were still up a little bit on the day, uh, pre-market futures. And again, business as usual. And then something happened. Again, these were all, these were literally all, for the exception of, KRTX, right? For the exception of KRTX, uh, everything was on the long side, right? BYND had this really, really aggressive move uh, last week into supply. It was trading 83.50, 84 pre market. I said, all right, this thing's going to go. It needs an 85 built to go. Okay, no big deal. Uh, Netflix, when, you know, Netflix was up a little bit, you know, 315s, 315 and a halves. Closed well, held all the downgrades. All right, you know, this thing, you know, just a matter of time. Wait till this thing starts, you know, building above 317, it should go, right? STNA, oh, you know, STNA looks good, right? STNA held, a uh, beautiful daily chart. You know, it's consolidating, everything is going to be good. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, SN, what is it? SNTE, uh, STNA, uh, STNA, right? STNA. Uh, everything's gonna be good, right? Everything's gonna be good. It's setting up. It's gonna, you know, all it needs to do is 42. It looks great, right? It looks absolutely great. Uh, you know, CCXI needs to build. You know, CCXI had that whole had the whole FDA thing. Man, it looks good. It's just an inch away. It's about the breakouts. I mean, so you kind of get the point, right? You kind of get the point. And then next thing you know, on a really quiet open, right? Really, really quiet open. You just started seeing. Some of the some of the most aggressive down bars that I could see in a very very long time. Now, again, somebody could turn around and say, "Well, blame it on the manufacturer." Okay, you can blame it on whoever you want. Okay, that the re the reality is when you have a linear market, it's been going up like literally all over the place, up 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 up. Nothing can get it down. Macro news can't get it down. China news can't get it down. Earnings can't get it down. And the market just keeps on going higher. It, it's the the market just needs any excuse. Okay, any excuse to pull the plug. And when you look at the first five minutes of trading, okay, and, I, and again, I'm, I am looking at this market from the long side, right? I'm literally looking at the market on the long side. And all I'm saying to myself is, all right, good flat open. Let's just wait for confirmations on the way up. Um, and that's it. And then the next thing you know, in the first five minutes, you are getting this, right? You are getting this, this, and this, right? And this. Okay, I mean this is I mean this is destruction candles. BYND, this first candle looked like it was about to, to go to zero. Okay, like literally go to zero. Apple gets upgraded today, nobody gives a shit, right? Nobody cares. Right, right to the word go. Facebook, fantastic moves last week, the strongest stock on the board gets destroyed. And this is all happening. Shop, you can go down the line. This is all happening literally in the first five minutes. So the one thing that we do know in a bull market is you're not going to short an aggressive opening candle because the reason why the market is so strong, because every single rising support is going to test and it should hold just the way we've been doing this for, for months and months and months. And it, they went through, just, just to give you an example, the cues and everything that's attached to it, it went through the five and the 10 day moving average, like it wasn't even there. Okay. And it wasn't even there. And 
the one thing when you are in a linear market, nine out of 10 times, it's going to stop here. And if it doesn't stop here, it's going to stop here and then reclaim and then start squeezing back the shorts. Because again, technical buyers are going to meet emotional sellers. The problem is that 10% of the time, it's going to go through. And there's absolutely no, there's no way of telling. You, you can go uh, and have data above data above data and collect all these data and back tests. And you will see 90% of the time the market will hold rising support for the 10% it won't. The problem is there's no way of knowing what day it is. So before you start turning around and say, wow, you could see the move coming. Well, I didn't see the move coming. Yeah, I saw the move coming uh, from a gap up to flat to rising five day to rising 10 day and then all the way down uh, to the rising uh, to the rising 20 day support. Here is the most amazing part. The aggressive way they went down, right, which was setting up here. And again, we could see clearly the line in the sand for the tomorrow session for the rest of the week. And the only thing I kept on saying was in the live webinar was, well, I, I sure as hell don't want to short into rising support. OK, the last thing I want to do. And as soon as I said that, realistically, the market started ticking back up, right? It started ticking back up. And if you look the same way with the aggression it went down on two candles, the same way it started crawling back up which was the most amazing day because think about it. Usually you don't see that type of aggression going through numerous, uh, numerous channels. And then the flip side, then you don't see the grind it out, right? The grind it out melt up uh, back into levels where, where, where it got uh, broken down. So it kind of leads us, it really kind of leaves us in a pretty weird dilemma tomorrow, okay? We are way off our lows but we are right in the middle of traffic. And if you look at charts, and then we'll talk about Tesla in a second, but if you look at Netflix, right? If you look at Netflix, okay? Right in the middle of this channel. Amazon, right in the middle of this channel. BYND, after a nice recovery, right in the middle of this channel. Uh, Facebook, right? Right in the middle of this channel. And go on and on and on. Apple, Square, you know, Boeing. But Boeing got hit. NVIDIA, I, I still like kind of to the short side. This is the only one that didn't really recover. But if you look at kind of where we are based on where the cues are as well, right? Same type of recovery. Tomorrow is going to be an incredibly patient day. And a lot of people use the word patience. And a lot of them use the word, um, you know, sit in your hands and all that good stuff. And they use that word very loosely, okay? But tomorrow you, gotta, you really have to be patient because if you go through charts, and I, and I really encourage traders to go through charts, okay, every single night you will see majority of charts are a mess, okay? And if I'm seeing this, pretty much every trader is looking at the same thing. Unless you're trading some god-awful small cap stock that with 200,000 shares in the float, that's up 900% tomorrow and trying to scalp it for 10 cents, we are all in the same boat. Now again, you can take that boat and you can paddle with one oar, right? Probably not gonna get anywhere. So tomorrow's gonna be one of those days that, and I have a pretty, pretty good value list for tomorrow's session, some long, some shorts. But I think tomorrow you have to be an adult, okay? You absolutely have to be an adult because we have to figure out which way these cues are going to break. They're either going to confirm today's price action and we're going to start going all the way down to the 198 level or they're going to reclaim the five-day moving average and go right back to highs. Again, to be determined. Until then, again, watch order flow, watch for clues, collect data. You know that boring stuff we always talk about? It's very, very necessary because if you don't and you just close your eyes and pretend none of this is happening, okay, you're going to find yourself driving full speed into a wall tomorrow, okay, into an absolute wall because now these channels are so congested to the upside, but they are well off the bottom of today's action. So again, we might need two days or so to get this market kind of back into directional bias unless the market completely tanks uh, at the open. The most ironic part about today's session was, right? This didn't trigger, this didn't trigger, this didn't trigger, uh, this didn't trigger. I was watching that for a Tesla today to the downside, right? This didn't trigger, this didn't trigger, this didn't trigger, but this did, okay? And I've always said this, folks, uh, again, the reason why uh, we trade the same names over and over again, there's an area of comfortability, there's an area of high probability, and once these things confirm, they usually you know, take on a life of their own, and when you saw today in Tesla, again, like I say, you don't need to catch 12 beta names to have a day. You catch one of these things, things are really good. And again, here's the point is we were watching it to the downside. It held again. We started watching it to the upside. And these are the levels, 333, then 334, 
and the potential 336. And again, here was Tesla. Uh, you know, I caught Tesla pretty decent. Uh, I missed the high. I literally missed the high of the day. Um, but that's okay, right? So here's the 333 pivot. Here is the 334 pivot. And it went right to supply at 336. You know, I was pretty happy about it. I would have been a lot happier if I would have caught that three. It, it, the funny thing is it traded 336 and I didn't get filled on stock. Don't ask me how, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, but okay, you know, pretty decent. Uh, I gave them back a little bit of money on BYND. I took a third of a position uh, through the lows. It kind of just held there. You know, lost like 65 cents on the third shares, which was fine. And then I kind of just waited. And then I kind of just waited. Uh, Tesla was fine. Uh, I actually still like Tesla uh, for tomorrow. But again, it, it, it really does show you two things. Patience is a virtue. You don't need to prostitute your money. Good things will happen if you know what to uh, look for and what to wait for. And the most important part is, again, you don't need to trade 20 times a day because you're not going to find 20 times the value that you are that the market's probably offering you. So going into tomorrow, again, I don't have a, I don't have a coin. Maybe I could, maybe, well, I do have a coin. All right, here's this shiny, not so shiny dime, okay? And I am going to, right? The answer will come tomorrow, which way the cookie's gonna crumble. So going into tomorrow, guys, we do have some longs, do have some shorts. Again, I don't think you could tie yourself into a corner, paint yourself into a corner, which way the market's gonna go. Uh, we're gonna wait for some ideas for tomorrow and let's talk about them, right? Um, I kinda like this, I kinda like this KRTX. Okay, I kind of like this KRTX. I was looking for uh, a downsert confirmation of 69 today, and it didn't confirm, right? Didn't confirm. Looked at 69, 69, and then it started moving its way up, right? Once it, it finally took out today's high, or the previous day's high of 77.12, okay? Tomorrow, if this thing can start reclaiming 79.80, I think there's a legitimate shot this thing goes to 87, 89 bucks. Because again, look at the, you know, look at the area here, and once it confirms the five-day, which is trying to pierce today, again, if you believe in the theory stocks trade from supply to supply and the demand to demand, you could see a move to 87. So definitely keep an eye on that as well. Let me give you guys some other names that I do like for tomorrow on the video. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.